Y'all just bear with me. I'm going to start it over just because. Y'all just bear with me. This, this don't pay me no attention. Just y'all just bear with me. I read it over and I start it over just because. This don't bear me no no attention. This Genesis 33, about verse 4. And he says, And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children who said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children with God have graciously given thy servant. Now you know when he said the children that he's graciously given his servant. Let's look at John 17. Before we get to that Genesis 1, let's look at John 17. We just add something extra to it. I thank the Lord. I just wanted y'all to get a little piece of what Pell had and whatever the Lord gave, to, gave me to add on with it so you get some extra understanding because all we're doing is trying to wait for Glover to ride his stunt bike around here. Genesis 17. Verse 6. Look what the Lord said. I mean, I'm sorry. John 17. Verse 6. Look what the Lord said. He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou hast gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. Ain't that lined up with just what Jacob just told you in law? These are the children which God have graciously given unto me. He said they were his, but he gave them to me, though. You see the correlation? You see the parallel in that? Y'all see that? Then we go what? We look at Isaiah 8 and 18, and what did we see? He said, I, he said, and these are the children which y'all have given me, and they are for signs and for wonders, for y'all have hope that dwell in Mount Zion. And then we go right back and we look in Genesis 1, and what did we see? That they shine like lights in the firmament, and they for signs. Same thing Daniel told you in Daniel 12. Same thing Yahshua told you in Matthew 13. That's why when I see these men be saying all that crazy stuff, I don't understand it. So then when we get back to John 1 and 1, what do we see? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It was in the beginning with God. And in him was light, and the light was the life of men. And the reason why people cannot see this man out of the Scriptures because they are the darkness. That's why they can't comprehend him. They can't see it. Because like John told you, they are sinners. That's why they can't see it. They can't comprehend it. Because remember, we're just going right back to what we dealt with with that Exodus 40. You can have the commandment. You can have a lamp. But without that oil, which is the spirit, you will not have light, which is life, which means you don't have Yahshua. So when we look back at that Genesis, I mean Isaiah 60, and he say, Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of Yah has risen upon thee. It's referring right back to his resurrection. But look at it again in this verse 2 before we get over here to Genesis. He say, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people, but Yah shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So when we look back at Genesis 1, let's see about it. Let's see about it. Let's see if that line on up. And then we go back and let's see what the Lord told his disciples and, and after he was resurrected. Let's see if his line on up. Let's see what the Lord got to say. I thank the Lord for the word he gave the brethren today. Let's see what the word says. He said, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Ain't it the same thing I said just told you? Is it the same thing? Let's see what he said. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, and that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And didn't he just tell you in John 1, he said, the light shine in the darkness. The darkness don't comprehend it now. I had to make a separation. That's why he said gross darkness was upon the earth. People couldn't see it. I had to get them light. The glory is the spirit. But let's go on over here and look in John about uh, 19, or John 20, I should say. John 20, about verse 15. See what he told him. Then, pair where you want to go with after that. Amen. John 20 and 15. Say, Yahshua, say unto her. Well, actually, we'll look at uh, verse 13. And when they say unto her, Woman, why weep thou? She saith unto them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Yahshua standing and knew not that it was Yahshua. Yahshua said unto her, Woman, why weep thou? Whom seek thou? She supposing him to be a, the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne in hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Yahshua said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Yahshua said unto her, Touch me not, for I, have yet, I am not yet ascended to my father, but I go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and to your God. He sat there and said, She done beheld him in the Lord then. That's why he told her, don't touch me. Because the glory of God was upon him. He was going back to that Matthew 17. He was glistening. He was shining. You know what I'm talking about? Which goes right back to, we got to be shining like lights in the world too amongst a perverse and crooked generation. 
And if we're not willing to show forth that same glory by shining as, as the sons of God, and the key thing that he said in Philippians 2 and 15 is you need to be harmless and without rebuke. Remember what the Lord told you, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Got to learn that, and you need to be without rebuke. If you can be corrected, that means you're not a son of God yet. Which means, in son of God, we translate as what? Because God is what? What he told you in 1 John, God is? Light. So you need to be a son of light. You say, what, you want, what verse you want of John 1? Oh, brother. Amen. No darkness at all in the living God. So there's no sin in him. There's no death in him. That's why the reason why some of these men have such a heart. The day starts in the daytime. So you say. But before you could get life, there had to be death. He had to show the manifestation of what the Messiah was coming to do. I'm coming to bring life out of death. They can't see it. They can't comprehend it because they're not a God. But it's okay. The Lord don't want them to know. What verse you want from? What you want? What, what by verse seven or verse eight? They say the same came. This is John one and seven. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. All John was coming to do was to bear witness to y'all sure that you might believe on. Remember what we went through that a little bit? Not too long ago, the Malachi 3 to Isaiah 40. Even with Aaron and Moses, he say Aaron, Mo, Aaron going to be to him a prophet and you going to be to him as God. All the same thing. He said he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which light every man that come into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But listen to what John finna tell you. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So if you believe on this man, you should be getting the, that light that arose and shined on him. It should be arising and shining on you. Because what is that power that's going to be able to make you a son of light? What is that power? That's the spirit. That's what's going to make you the true children of Israel. What Paul told you in Romans 9. It's the children of the promise that's counted for the seed. The, the seed is the word. You've got to be born of the word and be counted as a child of the living God. If you're not born of the word, you're not a son of God. You're not a child of the living God. You're not the children that were graciously given to Jacob. Indeed, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And I thank the Lord. Because we just had a conversation with a man about that a couple of days ago, didn't we? Talking about you got to be born again. You got to be born again. Well, Peter told you you need to be born of incorruptible seed and not corruptible seed. That means you need to be born of the Word. The Word is incorruptible. Matter of fact, let's look at that since I said it. Come on over here to 1 Peter 1 and 22. Where you want to go at out of that, Pip? Genesis what? 33? Amen. 1 Peter 1 and 22. Listen to what he say. Seeing you have purified your souls in the bang of truth through the spirit under unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So that means you see this here? That means each and every last one of y'all need to love each other and you don't need to be faked by it. You don't need to be putting your own self-interest above the brethren. Listen to what the man said and listen to him again. Seeing you purified your soul, that means you done cleansed yourself by obeying this man. By the word of truth, through his spirit, you need to love each other without faith. What did you told you? Unfeigned love. Because unfeigned love means there's no fakeness, no, uh, no guile, no pretending, straight up real love. And look what he said. And that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, with passion, with a clean heart. That means y'all need to love each other with a pure and clean heart. Not when it's convenient for you, not when it's self-serving for you, but with a pure and clean heart. What's going on, bro? Are oh, you all right, man? We know you like to ride that bicycle. Yeah, right. Listen to what he say. Being, oh, he almost failed. He say, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which live and abide forever. There's no way you're going to be able to be born again if you ain't born of this word. The man says, incorruptible, it abide and live forever. Y'all need to consider that. Look what he tell you. For all flesh is grass and the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass wither. 
and the flower will fade away. So we say any glory any of y'all can get, it's going to pass away. But we done already read, didn't the glory of God lives forever. You say Genesis 33 and 10, correct, bro? Genesis 33 and 10. We're just going through something what Pale had, man. We ain't even got started yet. This is just some game for free. We in Genesis 33 and 10, Pell. I mean, uh, my bad. Genesis 33 and 10. Let's see what he say, y'all. Y'all, everybody ready? Hold on. My mom and little muffin ain't ready yet. Let's see what the Lord say. And Jacob say, Nay, I pray thee. If now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face as thou, I have seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. You want me to keep going, or that's what you want? Indeed, Matthew 17 and 5. Something just came to my mind with what we just read on this. Let me see what it is. Now look what he said. He said, he said receive this present at my hand. What do you think that present was in, in Yahshua's hand that his father received? Anybody know? No, let's look at Isaiah 53 and about verse 12. And let's see what the book says. And then we'll go for this, for this to tie in. Because I know what Pell wanted when he said this here, when, he, when you read this part, if thou be pleased with me. But let's see what made him pleased. Isaiah 53 and 12. Matter of fact, make it verse 11. That's even better. Matter of fact, make it verse 10. That's even better. He said, Yet it pleased y'all to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, the pleasure of y'all shall prosper in his hand. And wait till y'all see how this tie in together with what the Lord got for us this afternoon along with himself. He shall see the travail of his soul, he shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors, and bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Because what he tell you in Psalm 40, which is written in Hebrew 10, he say, offering and sacrifice thou did not desire. He say, but a body thou hast made unto me. Because the Father say, I ain't got no pleasure in the blood of bulls and goats. I take my son, though. That's the present that Yahshua came and brought to him. I bring you that. I bring you that. You know what I'm talking about? Come on over here to Matthew 16. Then we read the, the bird pair of God for you. Matthew 16, verse 21. You heard it before, you're going to hear it again. Hmm? Matthew 16 and 20. Just because we're close to where we need to come at. Look what he said. He said that he charged the disciples that they should tell no man that he was Yahshua the Messiah. And from that time forth began Yahshua to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So that's letting it be known. That's his present to God right now. Because that's what a sacrifice is, is it not? That's a present to God. That's an offering to God. He said, hey, I'll be willing to accept that. So let's look over here to Matthew 17, about verse 5, where he just called folks. And let's see what he said. He said, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. He said, I'm well pleased in him because of the prayer. You see how that tie into that Genesis 33? Y'all see that? That verse 10, he said, let's look at it again. And in verse 10, see what he said. Let's see the correlation. Let's make sure we catch it now. Just don't be sitting around there shaking your head, talking about you here. Got to make sure you catch it now. He told you, he said, if I found grace in thy sight, receive my present at my hand, I've seen thy face. Let's see who's seen this face. Come on over here to John 3. I just seen some dudes arguing about this all day. It might be John 5. I think it's John 5. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's John 5 and 37. Just heard some stupid niggas arguing about this the other day. They were arguing about the verse we just read in Matthew. Was that an angel? Was that the Father himself? Because of what the Lord just told him right here. Matthew 5, 37. He said, The Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So who's seen his face then? He said, Ain't no man beheld the Father but the Son. Come over here to John 3 and 13. He said, no man, John 3 and 13, he said, no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. 
Because if ain't nobody seen his face, who done seen his face? Y'all sure had to see his face for him to be sent, then. That man say, I beheld your face now. And he saying, I seen the face of God. How do we know that? When you look at Daniel 7, when he was brought to the throne of the ancient of days and he gave him a kingdom. And then he said what? He said he was pleased with him. Why would he be pleased with his son? His son offered his life. Literally and figuratively in the spiritual sense because he sacrificed himself by suffering in the flesh. And then he laid his life down. So y'all got to look at yourself and be like this here. Why is God not pleased with you? Why have you not offered yourself? Straight up and down. Look what he said. Why you ain't did it? How come, you, how come he hasn't received the present at your hand? Where you want to go at after that? I think I got an idea where you want to go. Where you want to go now? Psalm 41, you say? Okay. Tenfold. Psalm 41, y'all. 21. Tenfold. Uh, yeah, that's when we dealt with that crown of pure gold. That was a good long time ago. I don't think you never heard of that one, that's on one of them pages. That's on the page with my name on it. What verse you want, man? He says, the king, Psalm 21 and 1, the king shall joy in, the, in thy strength, O Yah, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desires, has not withholding the request of his lips. Say, Lord. So now y'all need to pause. Did not y'all show a joy in the strength of his father? He joyed in it. What was that joy? That was his faith in his father. And therefore through that faith he rose from the dead. And that salvation was brought. And then did he greatly rejoice? Because the brethren greatly rejoiced when they seen him. You didn't think he would be able to greatly rejoice because he overcame to deliver his brethren from bondage of death? Then he said he done given him his heart's desire. His heart desire was for us to be sanctified by the truth. And that's what the prayer that he made in John 17. And that all that we could be made perfect and one in him. To show forth the glory of the Father and that he, y'all, showed the Messiah who he sent. Y'all know the prayer in John 17. Wasn't that his desire? What else? You want me to bury verse 3? He said, for thou prevent him with the blessings of goodness. Thou set a crown of, of pure gold on his head. Let's look at the sweat though. I'm just messing with. I got a mess with. He asked life of thee, and thou gave it him, even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is greater than thy salvation, honor and majesty has thou laid upon it. So when we look at this here, he said he asked for eternal life. Didn't the Father give it to him? He said, man, the Father gave me a commandment that I laid my life down. He said he also gave me a commandment that I could pick it up, and that all that believe on me should have eternal life, and no man could pluck them out of my hand. Y'all understand that? Look what else he told him. Then he said, he said, his glory is great in our salvation, honor and majesty have they laid upon him. Didn't he say?